Finally, on Friday, in the dead of night, the legislature did uh, submit my budget, but before introducing it, they have amended it to include $500 million of additional spending that they don't pay for, and they have also funded 6,800 programs to the tune of approximately $200 million. Um, I will uh, be submitting uh, this evening my final emergency appropriation. And this appropriation will include a number of uh, very vital priorities to the state, in addition to balancing the budget and balancing the budget with fiscal responsibility. If the legislature chooses to pass my amended budget, uh, they must confront uh, at least one vital issue, and that is the issue of the Federal Medicaid Assistance Program. Uh, that program was going to be funded, we calculated, at about a billion dollars. But the legislature is not listening to the signals from Washington. Already, the Senate has been unable to address this issue three times. Uh, now they are saying that if they address it at all, less money will come to the state. There is no plan, there's absolutely no way that the legislature addresses this. It's as if they just stick their heads in the sand and ignore it. If they do not find a contingency way to address Medicaid, if we don't get it from the federal government, I will veto every single appropriation, all 518 of them, and the 6,800 programs that they fund uh, for $193 million, more commonly known as member items. I will veto all of this. These are serious times, and we certainly hope and pray that our representatives in Washington will be able to bring that Medicaid money home. But the only responsible way to budget is to have a contingency plan if we get less of those resources or if we don't get those resources at all. And I'm insisting on it, in addition to other priorities that I think I've made clear in my emergency appropriations. So I'm asking the legislature to take a, make a choice. You can pass my emergency appropriations and pass the budget tomorrow, or you can, uh, what they can uh, additionally do is to pass their amended budgets, but they'd better not put any of those additional appropriations or member items in until they resolve uh, the issue of Medicaid, and I also believe some other issues that need to be addressed. Thank you. Governor, uh, to be clear, you're only going to veto the additional spending and member items if they don't pass an FMAP contingency plan? Uh, yes, most of the rest of it is consistent with the budget I submitted January 19th. Well, their additions and spending, yes. Governor, basically the government won't shut down. What, what, how much power does this threat really have to veto the additions and to veto the number items? Um, it, it, it won't shut the government down, but um, it will balance the budget, and it will put us uh, in, in a much better place than we would be if it passed. Governor James Medor with Newsday. Um, so you're now going to submit new emergency appropriation bills, um, replacing the ones that were submitted on Friday. What will be the no, major? I'm, I'm introducing the emergency appropriation bill that, uh, that I announced on Friday. So you're making any changes? I don't, I don't think so. You said you had other issues you wanted them to address besides the FMAP contingency plan? Yes. So what, are, what are those issues? They're in the emergency appropriation bills. So that includes the, the property tax cap? That includes, includes the property tax cap, Higher Education and Empowerment Act, um, the uh, desire to uh, to uh, have wine in, in grocery stores as a revenue raiser. Um, and I am not that thrilled about the sales tax on clothing. I would rather do this, the sugar tax, but um, I think they know what my priorities are. Governor, are you saying that you, you will accept the, the additional <clears throat> education spending and the other additional spending that they put in there if they adopt a contingency plan for the FMAP money? Um, I'm saying that without it, 
that I'll, I'll veto everything. What if they adopt that? I'm not going to get into um, the weeds here discussing what the negotiation is. I think I've given you a framework of what I'll accept and what I won't accept. Governor, you Governor, talk to you, Governor it, it seems like the budget that we've arrived at each mail is not so different from the budget you proposed uh, in January, and that is certainly the position of Speaker Silver. Do you agree with him on that? He's saying that... He's saying that the budget that we've arrived at this way is not so different from the one that you proposed in January, so what's all the fuss about? Then he should have no problem uh, addressing the issues that I have uh, brought up. It, that's exactly right. It wouldn't be that much to put a property tax cap, for instance, in on top of it. It wouldn't be that much. Is it asking a lot to do a contingency plan on Medicaid? If we already have been told that we're going to receive less resources, they are not going to drag me back in here in November like they did last year and then not close the deficit. Remember, they went home and left $500 million on the table. It's like somebody walking out of a restaurant and leaving you with a bill. It's just that they left the people of New York with a bill because we had to delay payments to schools and local governments and not-for-profits. I'm not going to allow that to happen this year. Uh, lawmakers, this ultimatum, did you tell them that you will veto all of their amendments if they do not pass a contingency plan? I think they get the general idea of what I want to do, and now I'm sure they know what I want to do. Governor, are you still talking to John Sampson and Sheldon Silver about the budget, or have we reached the situation that you experienced under George Pataki, where the legislature passed the budget without the governor, and the governor then vetoed the budget? Well, I will talk to the two leaders, but I would suggest that they come to the meeting with a plan on how to address the critical priorities that I have pointed out need to be addressed at this time. If they don't want to address those priorities, I don't know why we would have a meeting. Two more questions. Governor, what's your organic reaction to their gaveling in and gaveling out tonight? I think uh, it's kind of appalling, and I don't know, they, they seem to be indicating that they are still in special session from race to the top back on January the 18th. In other words, they've been in special session for the whole year. I, I, I don't understand that. And if they're really trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes that way, I think that's absolutely appalling. Right now, you could, if they pass their two-way budget, you could veto everything now, right? Yes, that's, that's right. You're not considering that? Or vetoing elements of it? I, I just told you the elements that I'm going to consider vetoing. Most of the budget is my budget. But there is, I think, uh, irrational spending that's not paid for. And the same thing that we've had happen before. When the legislature has a gap and can't uh, fill it, they re-estimate the revenues up and uh, say that, oh, all this money is coming in. The same way they keep telling you that uh, the budget's going to pay us any day now. They've been saying that for a month. It's this, I think, um, precept of failure that the more you fantasize, the easier it is to fail. But this time, it's going to end tomorrow. So I want a real plan. And I want one that addresses the issues that the people of the state of New York have made clear are important. And uh, if, if I don't get that, and I don't see a budget that I don't think is going to immediately open up and we're going to have a gap, which is what I faced my two years, I have learned the lesson. Uh, it may have been in the past poor judgment to think that these budgets would hold up. So I am addressing what I think uh, have, have been the mistakes of the past. And I'm not letting anyone out of here without realizing there are three ways the budget can open up right now. One is that we misestimate our revenues. The second would be that uh, we have not put the proper value on what the cuts will reveal. And the third is that the Medicaid money from Washington may not actually get here. I'm not saying it's not coming, but I think it's very clear that Washington's sending a signal that if it comes at all, it will be less than what we were expecting. 
Do you see anywhere in their budget that they address that? They just leave it. 